let's go ahead and create some glass now. We're going to start off with just regular glass. So as we can see here, glass has a couple of different properties. First one that we can notice, which is the most prominent one, is we can see through glass, which means it's transparent. Also, if we take a look at the glass, we can see that it has reflections to it. And the last thing is that it has some diffuse color. So the first thing that you always want to do when you're creating glass is get the diffuse out of the way. And when you're creating glass, the way to discover what is the diffuse for the thing that you're trying to create is look at your reference image and try to see the darkest spot you can find on the glass. So if I take a look at this reference image, which is this thing that I'm trying to recreate, if I zoom in over here, I'm going to try to find the darkest place. And I think that if I take a look at here, more or less, this is going to be the darkest spot that I can find. So this translates more or less to the color that I should choose for my diffuse in order to get this sort of a glass. So I'm going to put this thing over to the side, change my diffuse to go to something like a dark gray color, something like this, maybe even a bit darker. All right. So more or less this thing works. Okay. Now, next thing I want to get out of the way is the reflection, uh, the reflective properties of the glass. So as we know, glass does have reflection. So I'm going to give it a bit of like 230 in reflection. And while we are here, I'm going to unlock the Fresnel and the Fresnel IOR for glass is 150 for regular glass and it kind of ranges up and down. So depending on what sort of a glass you're trying to go for. In my case, I need to go with a 1.5 because this is going to be just regular glass. So we're going to put the reflection IOR or the Fresnel IOR at 1.5. And now we are okay with the reflection. Next thing we want to do is deal with the refraction portion of this material. Now, as we said, glass is refractive or transparent. So we're going to go in here and give it a high number. So let's try 240 and see how this thing works at around 240. All right. I'm just going to get half of this to render just so we can see the results a bit faster. There we go. So right away, I can see that this thing is starting to look like regular glass, but not quite as there are still some things that we would need to address. Namely, let's take another look at another sort of a glass, which is again, a normal glass. But in this case, compared to the one that we had previously, which was on a white background, here we can see that we have some background, which is going to help us to define some other things. One being the reflections. We can see that we have reflections here, but they're not very bright like we can see it over here. So it's kind of hard to differentiate what is in here due to the fact that when glass re uh, reflects, the reflection are not so clear. So what we can do here is to make the reflection less visible or less crisp, we can decrease the glossiness. But now here is the issue that we're going to run into. For example, if we go over and decrease this thing to 0.9, what we're going to see is that the reflections are starting to be a bit blurry, but that is not what we're going for. We want to have a bit of a skew in the reflections without making them blurrier. So, in order to get that result, what we're going to do is I'm going to go over and get my glossiness to 0.99. Now, the reason for doing it this way is that now the blurriness to this reflection, I'm not going to control it through the glossiness, but instead I'm going to go down over to the BRDF. I'm going to make sure that I have GGX selected, so the micro facet uh, GTR, GGX. And in here we have this GTR tail fall off. By default, this thing is set to two. Now, if we uh, lower this to, let's try it like 0.1. What you're going to notice is that all the reflections are gone. If we increase this to 0 
you can see the reflections are pretty much blurred in as if we had this glossiness set to a very low level. If we get this thing to one, now we can see that we have reflections, but they're slowly starting to get a bit skewed. Namely, it kind of looks like this thing has been fogged in a bit, which if we compare to what we see here, this is more or less the result that we're going for in our reflection. So by doing it this way, all we got to do is just get the glossiness to 0 0.99, because if you have this thing at 1, this will not work. So you have to have it at 0 0.99 at least. If we want to have even uh, more of this, or you, you want to want blur in these uh, reflections, you can even lower this further. But in this case, since we're going just for regular glass, I'm going to leave it at 0 0.99. This, we can put it anywhere from 0.5 to 1.5, depending on how you want your glass to look like. I've tried it, and I think that with 0.8, I get more or less the best results for this sort of a look. So if I'm going for something like this, I think that this would be the best result. So now we have this glass as it is. We can call it finished this way. Or, if we take a look in, in here, what we can notice is that there is some sort of an irregularity to this surface. Now, that irregularity can be seen in the reflections, these small breakups. In order to get that, what we would need to do is go over in our maps, in the bump. We can put in a normal map, or not a normal, but a noise map. For this noise map, I'm going to put it to a size of something smaller. Let's try 10. All right. Give it a very slight amount. Let's try it with 1. Maybe 2. Just enough so it makes the surface a bit broken up. So as you can see over here, the reflections are starting to set in and now we can see more of this surface which would be similar to what we are seeing here in this glass so with the help of that normal map we're driving or breaking up the reflection of the entire surface so i'm going to go ahead and name this thing glass and now let's take a look at our second type of glass Namely, this is going to be frosted glass. Now, how, how does fr frosted glass look like? Well, if we take a look at this image over here, we can see a couple of different types of frosted glass. You have the clear glass, which you can see it's just normal glass you can see through. You have the satin type of glass, which is kind of a frosted look. Then you have the more misty look, with the, which is the acid etched glass. And then you have the sandblasted glass. Now, all of these have a very different look to them, and they can be used in a variety of ways. Now, for example, if we take a look at this glass, we can notice that we have a combination of a bump map driving this underlying uh, type of distortion. We have some very visible noise also and we have this mesh that is going across it also we can take a look at maybe this type of a frosted glass which is more common to be seen around households and offices so this one is privacy sandblasted glass so let's try and create something like this for this i'm going to put this over to the side and now i'm going to make a copy of my glass put it over here and let's name this frosted glass and apply it to our shader ball. Okay. Now, when it comes down to creating frosted glass, especially if we're going for something like this, we need to change just a few uh, different parameters in order to get this. The first one would be, if we take a look at this, we can notice that the surface is a bit bumpy. So, Let's go ahead and inside the bump. We, here we have the noise just to break up the actual uh, reflection. But 
I'm going to actually remove this I'm going to clear it. And now we're going to put another noise. This time around, though, we're going to make it a very small size. So let's try 0 0.1. I'm going to select just one smaller piece so I can see it better. And we're trying to get it to be something similar to what we're seeing here. And by just doing this, it's very slowly starting to look like what we're seeing here. But I'm going to try to make this thing even a bit smaller. So 0 0.03. Let's see. And also I want to decrease the blurring. So I'm going to put it to 0 0.1. There we go. And already I'm starting to get this look that I'm going for but by just changing this. Now what we can further do here, depending on how we want this thing to look, we can increase the bumpiness. So if I go to five maybe and get this thing like this, now I'm really starting to get this sort of a result, which is more or less what I'm going for. Now there's another thing we need to address and that is the actual glossiness of the refraction. So if I go ahead and further decrease this so to maybe 0 0.9, this will make it so that the refraction further makes this thing um, more cloudy. But if you're actually using normal map or a bump map in here, know that that will give you the effect of the glossiness without actually having to input a glossiness uh, to your refraction because take into account the fact that once you start putting in glossiness to your uh, glass especially in the refract your rendering time will go up so you can kind of cheat by just uh, bumping up the bump over here and that will give you this sort of a result so if i go ahead and actually just render this whole thing or just let it so it kind of clears up I can see that now this really is starting to look like this frosty uh, look that we're going for in our glass so now since we've created the regular glass and we have a version of our frosted glass what we can do is always combine those two for example into something like this in this case, this is a plaque which you would give uh, as a graduation or maybe as an award for pretty much anything. In this case, it's a police officer plaque. So if we were to create something like this, where the inside would be frosted glass while the other is clean glass, the easiest way to, to create something like this would be to basically blend these two materials together. And let's do that. I'm going to take my frosted glass. Actually, let's just create a new material. Create this thing as a blend material. Keep the old material as submaterial. And now in here, I'm going to put the regular glass in the first one. Apply it over here. There we go. And in here, I'm going to put the frosted glass. All right. At the moment, they're mixing without having any uh, way of differentiating where it which one should go. So in order to get this thing to mix, I'm going to use this black and white image. So all I did was I took an image, downloaded from the internet, you can do anything, and I just desaturated it. Now take into account that we have uh, grays, we have whites and blacks. So it's not a mask which has just white and black. The reason for this is that the more white it has, the more of that frosty look it's going to let through. And if you have grays and a gradient of color, it's going to let a different amount of that frosty uh, look appear, uh, show up on your model. And it's going to give you a nice three dimensional look on whatever it is that you're rendering. So in order to see that thing better here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh uh, hide my shader ball and I'm going to open up my material slate. There we go. Let's apply the same thing over here. And at the moment, I'm basically looking at a problem. The reason is that, first of all, as soon as I put this thing over here, I'm going to notice that this is not projecting quite right. The reason for this is that this plaque doesn't have a UV map that is 
matched to it. So in order to get that, I'm going to hit a new UV map, make it box and make it fit. And just so I don't screw up the original UVs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put over this to the map channel 2. There we go. And once we do this, what we need to do is go over in our map and in here, let it so it's choosing the UVs from the map channel 2. So now we can see that this thing is projected onto our plaque. Now the reason why this thing looks like it's doubled down is because this is not just a regular Im image that has been projected on one side, but it's a UVW map box projection. So it has it on the front as well as on the back. So if you're going to be doing this on a model that you have created, make sure that your UV is only on one side. If you want to get this thing only on one side, as in this case. So if we want to have this thing like this, we can use it this way. Or if you want to have everything else to be frosty except this inner piece, we just go over in the output and invert the values. This will give you a, this sort of a look. So just like that, you can create plaques that have uh, frosted and regular glass applied to them both.